Pokemon Crystal Legacy is a ROM hack I made that optimizes Crystal by adding new wild encounters and improving gym leaders. And today we're looking at the top 10 early Pokemon to catch to help get your run started. Number 10. Pichu can now be found on the route just before Violet City and even in baby form is one of the best utility Pokemon in the early game. This ranking is going to mainly focus on a Pokemon's performance up to the end of Azalea Town, where we will also give points on whether a Pokemon has a good long-term investment. Now despite its bad stats, Pichu comes loaded with the move Charm, and this allows it to nerf the attack of any Pokemon by two stages. With a bulkier Noctowl replacing Pidgeotto, the Faulkner fight now tends to run for more turns, and a double stat debuff can give a massive benefit over the course of a fight. As crazy as it sounds, Pichu can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Charmed Noctowl. The same can be said for nerfing Bugsy Scyther and the rival's Croconaw. Pichu also gets Thunder Wave as a secondary nerf cannon, and Thundershock, which is very rare at this point in the game, is great for cooking the first two gym's many flying types. So really, the only thing holding Pichu back are its mediocre stat, which even that has the potential to be improved. Through grinding friendship, it's unlikely to evolve Pichu before the Faulkner fight, but dedicated players can make it happen for Bugsy, and this only further raises Pichu's stonks. It's no star player, but given all this utility, plus the fact that it primes you for a mid-game Raichu, makes it a great new early game encounter. Also, if you like what Pichu has to offer, but want a Pokemon that does this even better, make sure to watch to the number one spot. But next it's Zubat who's going to take number 9. Zubat has always been a worthwhile long-term investment, but it originally suffered in the early game from a bad move pool. In Crystal Legacy, Zubat has been given early gust and a buffed leech life, which ultimately helps its prior lackluster start. More importantly is Zubat has a 4 times resistance against bug and grass moves. This means Zubat can help out a ton against Sprout Tower, Bugsy, and the rival's Bayleaf. And a catch at the start of the game sets you up for a level 23 Crobat, which will probably like you so much it subscribes to your YouTube channel. Number 8. Sentret. Now just because a Pokemon isn't a great long-term investment doesn't mean it can't provide major benefit for your run, and Sentret is a great example of this. Sentret now learns Thief at level 9, which comes right in time to face your first gym leader. See, Noctowl's dumb thickness and ability to reduce accuracy can delay your win and draw this fight into deep water. Getting off a quick Thief not only shortens the fight, but also allows Sentret to heal and get off some more damage. Best thing about this line though is that its evolution comes at 15. For it is quite strong for the Azalea Town point in the game. And with the TM Swift obtainable in Union Cave, this gives you a massive damage output for the Rockets, Bugsy, and your rival. Also with Dig, Rollout, and Resistance to Ghosts, Furt is able to help through some of the mid-game before it falls off. So if you're looking to pick up a permanent partner and steamroll the game, it might not be the best option, but especially in something like a Nuzlocke, stonks are now very high for the game's regional rodent. Number 7. Sparrow has always felt like the Big Mac of early game Pokemon Crystal. And I would argue that this holds true in our ROM hack. It's not the best, but you know what you're getting, and it always delivers. With instant access to Stab Peck and good attack, Sparrow is just a solid contender for running through the early game bug catchers and sages in Sprout Tower. It also can have its accuracy lowered by Faulkner, and is a great option for the Bugsy fight as well. It's definitely the best bird in the early game, but it falls off in the late game compared to Dodrio and Pidgeot. Sparrow's early game performance is still so clean that it just simply can't be overlooked. Number 6. Poliwag. So to put it simply, any Pokemon that can learn sleep is just really good in Gen 2. You take a 60% chance to have your opponent not be able to do anything for up to 6 turns. It basically makes a Pokemon like Poliwag great for just about any fight. Getting off of sleep lets you swap into something for free, nerf a scary attacker, set up your own Pokemon, heal if you play items, or just take a Pokemon out for nearly free. Early access to Hypnosis is quite rare, and so Poliwag is a great insurance policy. And since we're not looking at starters, the fact that it's also one of the only early game water Pokemon makes this line a high value option. Plus, as you progress with the game, Poliwrath is a solid long-term investment. Number 5. Now, Teddy Ursa hasn't changed much compared to Base Crystal, but it's still an amazing pickup. With really high attack and access to Stab Scratch right off the bat, I find this little fellow to be really helpful as a simple all-around attacker. Truly, really, like, no matter what issue I get into, just having a high damage Pokemon is very reliable. More importantly though, early game Teddy Ursa gets all the upgrades when it needs them. Stab Swift hits super hard and is available before the second gym, and Headbutt hits even harder with a chance to flinch before the third. Teddy Ursa is really just a slower yet more solid physical attacker without the bad investment of Sparrow. Because just as it's starting to fall off, you get Ursaring, and this makes it amazing into the late game. Number 4. Houndour and Growlithe 
Despite their differences, these two Pokemon are quite similar at their core. They're just fast, high damage fire users. Now Growlithe was always a reasonable pickup in the original Crystal, and while it's been made better with an updated move pool, its route has also seen the addition of the equally good Houndour. Fire type is just great for the early game, serving not just Sprout Tower, but also in the Bugsy fight. Growlithe's Bite is great for the final Rocket's Curse Slowpoke, and if you're going up against the rival's Bayleaf, you are going to be glad you have a fire type. Fire types are great in Johto, and so if you don't pick up Cyndaquil, either one of these are an amazing early game option that will carry you through the full game. Number three. Ghastly. Now, since this video is emphasizing Pokemon for their early game potential, Gengar isn't a focus on this list. Ghastly, however, is still an amazing early game choice. Now, Hypnosis is always useful, but Ghastly just uses it so much better than Poliwag. Since you resist normal moves, it's very easy to predict and get a safe swap in on the Poison Cloud. And it's great speed that makes Hypnosis a lot more reliable to get off. Additionally, Ghost is now special and Lick has been slightly buffed, which means Ghastly can also do consistent damage. If you're in a bind, it even gets cursed to guarantee a kill on a tricky Pokemon like Scyther or Silver Starter. All of this is amazing to begin with, but then combine it with the fact that you're now raising a Pokemon with the potential to be the best in the game. Simply put, Ghastly is one of the most reliable early game Pokemon, and it turns into Gengar. Number two. Mareep. Seeing its return to 32, plus the addition of it on Route 31, you should look no further than the mighty Mareep when it comes to early game Pokemon. Despite its weakness, Mareep has some of the best damage output against Faulkner's team. Mareep is especially great though, as it gets its first evolution at just 15. This makes it amazing for both Bugsy's Ledian and Scyther, and it's also one of the best options for Silver Zubat and Dreaded Croconaw. It's also just a great answer to the many water and flying types you see in the early game. All this benefit, all this utility, plus the promise of an Ampharos, makes Mareep, as you would expect, a top tier pick. Now, one of today's honorable mentions is going to be what is actually the technical best early game Pokemon, and that is Dunsparce. With ridiculous stats for the early game, strong normal type stab moves, and the now 90% accurate glare, this thing is absolutely insane. The reason we're putting this as an honorable mention, however, is because most players simply will not use it. Combining a massive fall off with a 1% chance to be found in Dark Cave just gives you a Pokemon that really no one wants to practically use. So Dunsparce makes honorable mention simply due to its rarity. And our other honorable mention today is actually Unknown. For this ROM hack, every Pokemon has been given a use, and Unknown has been given Ancient Power to pair with its other only move, Hidden Power. Now as a guaranteed encounter with a rock move, Unknown actually has the stats to be quite helpful in the first two gyms. Its fall off is so dramatic, and its use is so singular, however, that it's basically like you're multiplying these benefits by zero. It's very useful in its niche, but unless you're nuzlocking, you're just probably not going to use it. And finally, number one. Now, despite all expectations. It's not Geodude who is making the number one spot on this list, but actually Onix. Given its ability to learn Screech, as long as you can play around special attacks, Onix will always survive long enough to nerf any Pokemon's defense into the ground. This makes it reliable for almost every single fight in the early game. It's also super useful for later gyms with the potential to become a Steelix. And so despite having an attack lower than Caterpie, Onix is the number one Pokemon for Crystal Legacy early game.